Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert, back with another gear review. And this time, I can promise you a Production Expert exclusive. You're listening to me and my dulcet tones through this rather beautiful Townsend Labs Sphere L22 microphone system. Now stop that, I can already hear you screaming, do we need another large diaphragm microphone to choose from? Now, the more hourly observant of you will have heard that I said microphone system. And it is true that the L22, this rather beautiful mic, is the business end of the Sphere system. The mic itself, it's a thing of beauty. So the mic I have in front of me is a little bit different to that that will actually ship, as I've got a pre-production model. But as you can see in the images, you get the shock mount, the normal mount, the lovely velvet bag, the cable, and of course the hard case. What makes this thing different is its ability to sound like all the microphones you've ever wanted to record through, but really probably couldn't afford. And even if you could afford one, you probably couldn't find one. So, a little bit more about the microphone itself. It's a large dual diaphragm condenser. It's a beautiful housing, nice and chunky, nice and solid. And it roots down here at the business end to a 5-pin XLR. Now, the cable that is provided with the system routes that 5-pin down to two 3-pin XLRs. And in this case, I've got both of those plugged into my Apollo Twin using both channels 1 and 2. So, you might be asking yourself why this microphone has two outputs. Well, a key aspect of the sound of any microphone is how it picks up the sound from different directions. It's polar pattern, if you will. Now, the guys at Townsend Labs say that having two channels allows the Sphere microphone to reconstruct this directional response of other microphones. In other words, or layman's terms for you and I, the microphone models are three-dimensional, whereas other microphone modeling systems are one-dimensional. And by one-dimensional, no boy band references please, I mean that other mic modelling products can at best only model the on-axis response of a microphone at only one given distance. With two diaphragms, the Sphere system is much more realistic and much more true to the original. So what we'll do now is go down to my MacBook Pro and I can show you where things get really exciting. So here we are down on my MacBook Pro and we're looking at the most basic version of the Sphere plugin. Now the first thing I hear you say is, but what if I'm not a UAD2 user? Well, you're absolutely fine because Sphere is AAX, VST, AU and of course UAD2 compliant. I'm using the Sphere system with my UA console and Apollo Twin, which allows me to effectively commit the sound of the microphones to tape, but it also gives me super low round trip latency for my headphone mix. Now you can see here on the Polar Pattern Selector that two of the patterns, Omni and Cardioid, are highly in light green. These are the patterns that were originally hardwired, if you like, into the original microphone. The cool thing with the Sphere software is we can actually choose any of the nine different Polar Patterns available. Everything from Figure 8 all the way through to Omni. Now you can hear the Polar Pattern is changing because you can hear the background noise and the fan noise from my MacBook Pro as I go through these polar patterns. So it's really handy that you can actually steer the polar pattern to get rid of any background noise, which is a really useful kind of a byproduct of the Sphere system. I think I'll choose subcardioid because it's getting rid of most of that fan noise. Over here we have the polar pattern graph, so you can see in turquoise the actual polar pattern of the microphone. And in yellow we can see the axis response from the audio input. If I click my fingers behind the mic, you can see we're getting some rear response. And now if I talk from the front again, you can see it all starts to move forward. We have three built-in filters, an off position, 60 hertz, 100 hertz, and 200 hertz to get rid of any real bottom end that we don't want, maybe in a vocal performance. I'll leave it on 60. We have the axis setting, which allows us to virtually rotate the microphone without actually changing the polar response pattern. From zero to a full 180 degrees off axis. And we have the proximity setting. Now, the proximity effect is one of those things, as I move back, you'll hear that the bass drops away from the tone of my voice. As I get closer and closer, you get much more kind of, well, we know it as the proximity effects, much more bass, much more kind of body 
to my voice. So using this control, and by keeping myself the same distance away from the microphone, I can push more bass into my voice by going to the plus side, and I can take a little bit more bass out by going to the minus side. The zero setting is the most accurate for the particular mic model you're using at the time. We have our output volume pot, of course, phase invert, and we can also reverse the microphone. So the front becomes the back and the back becomes the front. So let's get onto the wow factor stuff. Let's go through some of these mic models. Uh, I won't use the brand name because of course there's licensing involved, but you all know when it says 47, exactly what it's supposed to be. So let's change it. Let's go for a 49. So here I am now talking through a 49K model. It sounds quite lovely. Again, I can change the polar patterns. However, in this case, the real 49 has a sweepable polar pattern, and that's why all the polar icons on this particular model are lit up in green. 67. There we go, there's our 67 sound. It's a classic, it's great for horns, it's great for brass, just an awesome microphone. Of course, you know, there are plenty of singers who've been recorded on 67. The ubiquitous 87, not my favourite microphone, if I'm totally honest, but they're just subtly different. They're all really, really close to the originals. 87 modded version, the update. Again, very, very subtly different, but we can still mess with the polar patterns, go full figure eight or subcardioid, just to get rid of that background noise. Really, really handy. And of course, the 12 model. I think for me, this is my favourite, certainly for my voice. It's got a lovely, smooth, top-end response. Just awesome. There are also what Townsend Labs have called hybrid models, like this SD small diaphragm 451. Now, they're hybrid because the L22 microphone is optimised to model large diaphragm mics most accurately. And the hybrid models are a little bit less accurate in their off-axis response. But in many typical use cases, it's still very accurate. In effect, hybrid models take the sound of the ribbon or the dynamic or the small condenser, depending on the model, of course, and combine it with a bit of the large diaphragm condenser flavor. The ribbon mic, as it kicks in, you can start to hear that lovely, warm, kind of traditional ribbon mic sound. Has to be said, to get the most accurate representation of a ribbon mic, you should use this with the figure of eight polar pattern. I'm not going to, because you'll hear all that horrible background noise from my MacBook Pro. And one of the main benefits of Sphere is, of course, you can have any polar pattern with any mic. And of course, the Dynamic 57. You can just hear it's a 57 without even looking at it. It's just got that kind of 57-esque tone. Two, two, there we go. There's a bit, bit more typical cardioid pattern. I'm really liking the pattern setting just to get rid of that background noise. There are then some custom microphone settings, which the guys at Townsend have said are absolutely flat from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's a very rare thing on a microphone to have it completely flat, but I actually really like this setting. So let's go back to that rather lovely 47K model, which really seems to work well on my voice. And now I'm gonna kick into dual mode or dual mic mode. You can see here a second virtual microphone has appeared and two extra pots. I've now got a mix control, which allows me to blend between microphone number one and microphone number two. Here's the 87, or of course, I can have a perfect 50-50 blend of the two, which is really nice. I can link, so I have the same mic in both slots one and two, or I can unlink and have whatever I like. I really do like that C12 model. Now in dual mode, there's another new pot called a line, and this allows me to virtually move microphone number two in space. So I can push up to two centimeters closer as I go into the minus territory, and you'll hear how my voice goes out of phase, and I can go the other way and pull back from the source up to two centimeters, and again, I'm out of phase. Now this is not necessarily a feature I would put on a vocal mic, but on electric guitar cabinets, you can use the alignment pot to just get some really nice tones by blending the two mics and pushing them maybe slightly further on or pulling them back like you would in the real world. 
So, so far, you've heard the Sphere microphone system as a single or as a dual microphone recording system. Fantastic. Big tick in the box. However, where this thing starts to get really interesting is when we swap from normal Sphere mode into Sphere 180 mode. Now, at the moment, I'm still talking into the front of the microphone, and you can tell I'm coming out heavily out of one side. That is because I now need to twist the microphone so that this symbol is pointing towards the thing that you are recording. In this case, my voice. So, one second. So now, I'm talking into the side of the Sphere L22 microphone, which might seem a bit weird. If I go over to this side, you're going to get more of me from one side, and as I push over to the other side, you're going to get more of me from the other side, which is really very handy. Of course, I can use the width setting and zero that out entirely. So no matter what side I go, it still stays central. Now, recording a voiceover or a lead vocal is not really where Sphere 180 shines. It comes into its own when recording instruments or large groups where there's a strong stereo image, something like a drum kit for example, or an acoustic guitar. Just happen to have some of those lying around here. Now in this example, I've put the L22 over my drum kit and the dual circle stereo mode kind of symbol is pointing directly downwards. The only other mic on the kit is inside the kick drum to give us some sort of real bottom end thump. But other than that, everything else is coming through the L22. So let's play some drums and I'll take you through some of the different settings, some of the mic models and tweak a few things as we go through so you can hear how amazing this thing sounds. So I think you'll agree that putting one Sphere L22 above a drum kit is quite a lot easier and significantly cheaper than hanging a range of expensive vintage German mics up there. So let's move on to acoustic guitar. And this time I'm going to come out of link mode and I'm going to start small diaphragm 451. And my favourite... 47.
So I think by now you may have realized I love this thing. It's a serious step forward for microphone technology. The build quality of the unit is absolutely awesome. The stability of the plugin equally awesome and fantastic. It just works. The microphone models that they say they're supposed to be really, really do sound like those mics. I've had the opportunity to use some of those very expensive top-end German mics. This thing just sounds the same. What can I say? It's like performing into a anything with a 12 on the end or a 47 or a 67 or an 87, if you like that sort of thing. It's absolutely stunning. What I really love about it is this could be the last mic I ever buy. And my bank balance and my wife really appreciate the work that the guys at Townsend Labs have put into this thing to get it right off the bat. But for me, what really makes this thing stand out above the other kind of virtual modeled microphone systems that are out there, some of which I've tried, some of which I haven't, is the ability to do stereo recording. We've got two diaphragms in here, so the whole stereo element, be able to have effectively two mics on an acoustic guitar or two mics on drum overheads, be they the same or different, that for me is the killer feature. And it just takes this thing from being a great microphone to being a truly brilliant microphone. You can learn more about the Sphere microphone system and the Sphere L22 microphone by going to all the W's townsendlabs.com. So I hope you enjoyed that. I've been James from Production Expert and I'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.